Okay, very good morning to everyone of you all. Today, I'll be sharing with you our EFSS fishing experience. So one overview of the experience is that we will want you to actually take care of your past pets for at least 8 weeks, starting from term 3, week 6, which is next week. And then each of you will actually be given one pet, one fish, and one water plant, some fish food, and aquatic uh, the pipette, and also weekly treated water. Now, how do we then take care of the fishes? It goes with number one, feeding. Or we feed twice a day. Uh, this will only use if you use the pellet, the brown colour food. However, if you are feeding the worms, we will only use once a day in the morning. Now, do note that we are using the worms and not the beetles because the beetles are quite big and it will kill the fish. Okay? And what will happen is one rule of thumb we will take a look is feeding only what the fish can finish in 5 minutes. If after 5 minutes you see that the fish uh, still, I mean, is still eating, then you are overfeeding. General rule of time, the number of uh, pellets is about 5. So 5 pellets would be enough really. And of course, remove any unwanted food usually after the 5 minutes. Changing of water. Remove not more than 20% of the water and top up with treated water. And lastly, take a look at the fish. Better still, take videos or photos of the fish or for any abnormal behaviour and symptoms of illness. So when we feed, right, you usually once daily or twice daily, depending on whether it's a pellet or mealworm, and only what the fish can eat within 5 minutes. This can, things that are left unfed for 3 to 5 days is not really ideal. Okay, so don't worry about the weekend. That one is still okay, but anything more than that uh, is a big torture. So do remember to care for your fish as well. Now, why is it so important to never overfeed? Because this unwanted food, when they rot, will actually help to pollute the water. And in a sense, the fish pool will also add on to this um, contamination, with, as both actually produce ammonia and these are toxin. And this kills the fish. One way to help is that there are already beneficial bacteria found in the water to convert this ammonia to nitrates. The bacteria will convert the nitrates to nitrates, uh, the nitrites to nitrates for mild toxicity, and the plants will remove even more nitrates. But then, this is not enough. What we need to do on top of that is to remove 20% of the existing water and help remove this substance. For us, because we are using a smaller tank, what we can do every day, we just remove the uh, one pipette or two pipettes of water. If there is too little water, for example, it is already uh, one third of the tank, we will add water, and that we add usually at the end of the week. How do we do the water change? We use a pipette, a pipette looks like this, and then, um, but then we don't use the tap water directly. Why? Because in Singapore, most of our tap water is treated, and when we say treated, usually there is chemicals in it. So tap water has to be treat, treated first before adding to the tank. But how do I make it safe? It's really because we want to add all this chlorine, okay, in order to kill off certain bacteria for us to actually use the water. But for the fish, these chemicals are harmful to them. So we must first remove these chemicals. One way to do it is to use a conditioner to remove the chlorine within the the tap water and this will be provided to you all by Mr. Tay and Mr. Siu weekly. But more importantly, after doing the water change, after doing the C, the suck, I mean, uh, sorry, the feeding, we want to have a visual check. We want to see whether is our fish doing well, is it healthy, does it have uh, cloudy eyes, uh, white spot or gasping for air near the surface. This is an example of a fish that has a lot of problems. So what we can do is, if you are not sure, please submit the picture of the fish under great power with, uh, comes with great responsibility form to actually ask the teachers how is it like. Or better still, some of your friends who have experience keeping fish, can, you can also ask them to see what is it like. 
More importantly, work as a class. As taking care of pet comes with a lot, a lot of duties and responsibility. As a class, you are not one person. As a class, there is 30 to 40 of you all. Work together and to do certain duties. But more importantly, your classmates, some of them are already keeping fishes. They are they have parents at home who have fishes. So they you can actually ask around like, oh, uh, maybe there are some tips on how to better keep the fishes. For us, we will want to actually do the recording of this daily log. The purpose of this daily log is to remind us that we have completed the duty of the day. How to the duty of caring for the fish. And at the same time, you will want to take some photos to see how our fish progress over time. More importantly, the helpline. Who can actually help you? The Green Ambassador, Mr. Tay, and myself, Mr. Siu. But more importantly, one very fast way to reach out to your to each other to, to reach out for help is your friends within the class. And do remember there is the QR code for the form for extra help. That is all for today's uh, sharing. And what we want to do is for you to enjoy your fishy experience. Now what we need your help to do is please go to your e uh, EFSS Digital Planner, your EDP, and sign up for the fishy experience. Not only sign up for the fishy experience, but also click the self-assessment and do a self-assessment on where you are at the start. Because at the end of the at the end of the four or uh, the eight weeks experience, we will be actually looking at how much we have grown. Do take a lot of photos as well, as these are important cherishable memories that we would like to keep at the end of our own journey. Thank you.